So this is my supercharged table saw sled. And I know what you're thinking. I've seen a lot of plans and a lot of videos on table saw sleds. I'm going to skip over this one. I've seen too many. Uh, well, I think I've got a couple things that might be of interest, so stay tuned. Uh, and I'll go through all the little features that I've incorporated into this. This, this, actual, this, this sled has um, been modified over a course of maybe 30 years or so. I've refined and, and I still have some more refinements to go. Uh, but let's start with its features. The first one, and probably the most unusual uh, feature, is my CNC interface. Uh, let me show you some drawings um, and how this, uh, this works. Okay, I've drawn all this out in my CAD program. Um, you can see this is the plate, this is the bottom plate of the uh, sled itself. This notch right here represents the blade, right where the, the blade path. So when I'm setting the whole thing up, I align the blade with that notch right there. These four holes, see there's a like four holes in the uh, auxiliary plate here. They reference and line this edge right here, right with the saw uh, path of the blade. And so when I put this part on here, it's all lined up. Let me show you the next drawing. Here, the auxiliary plate is placed on the sled. The part I'm cutting is here, and the blade path is right here, cutting off this piece to the precise length that I want, and a very, very fine cut. Usually a little finer cut than I can get uh, on the CNC. Uh, I do this one, this piece. This is a part for a, uh, a gamble dining table. And I like to get the joints between those segments so tight that you don't see a glue line. Uh, and that's really, I'm not able to do quite that tight a joint on my CNC. That's why I use this uh, 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 table saw interface to um, get that uh, 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 tight, tight uh, joint and clean line there. A common issue with sleds is that after several cuts and over time, this uh, backup gets eaten up and it's not fresh and you don't have a support back there and you start getting cuts that are frayed and stuff. This sled has adjustable backup. You can see these screws here, they loosen up and these guys slide in and out. Uh, I have uh, moved these in so it's time for a fresh cut. So let's go ahead and run that blade up. So now I've got a fresh backup. It's perfectly uh, going to give me a really good cut. Let's look at the back of the sled here and I can show you how the adjustment works. Okay, you can see in here this screw that attaches the backup. Um, there's a slot right there so I can move it in and out. So turning the sled upside down and looking at the bottom side, you can see this guy's been used a bit. It's kind of torn up a bit. Uh, but I like to use this UMHW stuff for the slides. That works really good. I attach them first and line up this notch with the blade, get it really even. Um, and, and, and it's really hard to get it perfectly square at that point. But then I kind of adjust with this uh, back piece that's attached to the sled. Uh, I uh, do the fine tuning on the square uh, when I attach that, I move this back piece back and forward a little bit until I get dead square. So my sled also features an adjustable stop. Moves back and forth, put a clamp up here to tighten it down to whatever setting. Uh, that's probably uh, the next version of this sled. I think I'm going to come up with something where I eliminate the clamp and have something that uh, is always there and is easy to clamp down. Uh, now, one thing that might be unusual about my sled is the mighty mag here. This metal strip, I attach a mighty mag 
with a dial indicator on it. The Mighty Meg is as square as I can get it to this. And when I line the Mighty Meg up, I line him up with this leading edge of the metal strip. And then I make an initial cut. This is especially good for joinery. Uh, before I had the multi-router years ago, uh, this is how I did join ring, a lot of it. Okay, uh, I zero out, and let's take a look looking straight down, and I'll show you how I adjust. So after I've made an initial cut, put the Mighty Mag up here, zero him out, and uh, before I start moving anything, I make sure that I do, I loosen the clamp on the sliding stop just enough where there's a little tension left on it. If there's still tension there, if there's no tension, it moves too easily and you really can't control this. It's like I knocked the zero off, so let's zero. Say I have to um, change it by five thousandths. Sometimes just tightening up the clamp moves that. This time it didn't, so there, that's all there is. And, and I can plant this guy on here, on this side, or I can go over to the other side um, and plant him too. So now I want to show you one more thing. I have a variation uh, on this sled that I use for dados. So this sled um, almost never gets used in my shop anymore. I used to do a lot of joinery, make a lot of tenons on this guy. You can see uh, the stop is big and it, um, where I can put things in sideways like this. And I spent a lot of time making sure this is dead square this way and this way. Um, it, th there's no uh, CNC interface with this guy. Um, and it, it's not, the uh, back stop right here is not adjustable, it's just replaceable. Um, the multi-router has essentially replaced this thing for me. Um, the dado sled will work for joinery, but there's a lot of stuff that has to come together just right. You've got to have, you know, fresh backup, which I've dealt with that. Uh, but the dado head uh, has to be very sharp and give a dead flat um, cut. And some, some sharpening services will send it back to you, the dado head back to you, and it's just unacceptable. It's really, you've got to have an exceptional uh, sharpening service and everything's got to come together right to uh, make this really, really work. Now, this one does have the Mighty Meg right here as well, so I have that uh, fine adjustment. So there you have it, my supercharged table saw sled. I'm not offering up DXF files of my sled and plates uh, and all that. Um, what I'm trying to impart to you is the concept. And for you to take what elements of my sled work for your situation and use them in your own sled.